this is Mike Green, and this is Fingerpick. What you just heard was the pattern player, which we'll get to in a minute, but of course you'll also want to do your own thing. This guitar wasn't chosen by accident, by the way. I've recorded dozens of acoustics here over the years, and this is the guitar that usually wins when we try multiple guitars for a spot. It's been on a lot of records, commercials, and TV shows. Now obviously, we recorded finger pick with an eye towards finger picking or situations where you want the guitar to sound purdy. But finger pick can also get fairly aggressive. Don't get me wrong, if you're looking to do a bunch of rock and roll, I'm not so sure finger pick is really your best choice, but I do want to point out that it's more versatile than its name implies. So anyway, let's get to some of the features. First is this auto legato button. Guitar players, or at least good guitar players, like to do slides into the fourth of a chord or from the second into the third or whatever. Those intervals are almost always either a half step or a whole step apart. In fact, if a guitar player plays two consecutive notes a whole or half step apart, it's almost always a hammer on or a slide. So finger pick gives you the option to do that automatically. If you play two notes a half step or whole step apart, finger pick automatically plays a hammer on or a pull. This is especially typical when you play a hammer on from the second into the third of a chord. It sounds more authentic that way, and you know how we are here at Realitone. Whatever we can do to make things like this easier, we try to give it to you. Now, of course, you might not want legatos to play every time you play a whole or half step, so you can always turn this off. Don't worry, you can still play hammers and slides because we have a key switch here so you can force legatos anytime you want, even for intervals bigger than a second. While you're holding this key switch, any connected notes will play legato. Cool, right? So now let's check out this 12 string option. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's exactly how it goes, but it's the best I can do right now. Anyway, for people who are not guitar experts, which is most people, here's how a real 12 string works. On the bottom three strings, there's an extra string that's an octave higher. So the difference between a regular guitar and a 12 string is this. And then on the high three strings, they add an extra string that's tuned in unison to the same note, not an octave. So it's like this. Now, this is a scripted 12 string, so for the high three strings, we give you a slider here to decide how perfectly tuned you want those strings. And since this is a scripted 12 string, we also have the ability to decide where the split point is for when the two strings are an octave apart versus when they are in unison. In other words, it doesn't have to be the bottom three strings are in octaves and the top three strings are unison. You could even make it so all the strings are an octave apart. Okay, so now let's look at this capo selector. If you've seen fingerpick players, you'll notice that they always seem to have a capo on the neck. Now you might be thinking it's so that they can play in a key that's easier to sing, which is often true. But a lot of the time, it's because they want the different tone that they get from playing higher on the neck. Check it out. First we'll play this pattern with no capo. Let's put a capo on the 5th fret. It's a more intimate sound, which is really useful. So for each string, we sample from open to way up the neck so that it's possible for you to get this tone. Also, with the capo selector, you can have it on key switches so you can change positions on the fly. So if you want to change neck positions in the middle of a song, you have that option. I usually leave this option off though because I don't want to accidentally hit one of these keys and not realize I've changed fret positions. 
So moving on, we have some reverb controls here. Pretty obvious stuff. You can go to the settings page to fine tune the reverb if you like. So now let's get to the pattern player. This is the same idea as Riala Banjo, where most people don't know exactly what notes a real banjo player would play, so we made that part easier. Now, with acoustic guitar, I imagine a lot of people might think that they do know what to play, until they actually try to do it. It's harder than you think, so why not let Fingerpick do the work for you? You just play chords in this section of your keyboard, the green keys, then Fingerpick plays patterns for that chord. You can get pretty fancy too, since there are 14 chord types that Fingerpick recognizes, so you can add a lot of movement with suspensions or add twos or whatever. Check it out. say that's a lot of fun. Now, of course with these key switches, you can choose from other pattern styles. have way more than just these 12 patterns. You can actually choose for yourself which patterns get assigned to each of these key switches. As of right now, we have 29 different patterns to choose from, but we'll keep adding more. So we just choose one, and now the key switch changes to that. And with a mellow one like this, you can put your own melody on top. As for you purists out there, that's not really the dust in the wind pattern. But it did make me think of that. And it shows you the kinds of things you can do over this bed pattern. Now, you may have noticed that our pattern player has been adding endings automatically. You can change that with this menu so no ending gets added. If you do that, then you can just play notes manually for your ending. Or you can have the pattern player automatically add a chord. Or my favorite is two notes on octaves. See, here at Realitone, we think of everything. <laughs> Speaking of things we thought of, maybe you'd like to have the MIDI files of a pattern so you can use it in your sequencer. You could even control other guitar plugins that way. Of course, once you have finger pick, I can't imagine anyone ever using anything else, but you could. So here's how you do it. Just go right here to this MIDI drag and drop rectangle, click on it, then drag to a track on your sequencer. And there's your pattern in all its glory. So there are a few more controls here I'll explain. This speed control is for when your sequencer is set to a tempo that's twice as fast or slow as what you'd want. For most of these patterns, you'll want to be around 100 beats a minute. But maybe your sequencer is set to 200 beats a minute. Whoa! Cowboy.
boy, you don't want that, right? So we want Fingerpick to play at half speed. Perfect. So now, let's take a look at this expression control. This tells Fingerpick how hard to pluck the strings. Now, you can do this with your mouse, or you can assign it to a knob or slider on your keyboard controller. Just right-click, then move the knob or slider on your keyboard controller that you want. Trust me, I'm moving a slider right now. Then click this Learn CC Number Automation and presto! I can now make this slider work for my keyboard. Now, personally, I like to keep this around 55, but obviously you can find your own sweet spot. Now, of course, here's where the pattern key switches are, which as we saw before can be reassigned on the settings page. And then here we have the humanized sliders. You know, so that if you want finger pick to sound more like your nephew. And then there's this swing slider. Now, even though you'll usually want straight sixteenths, I like to add just a tiny touch of swing. So I hope this video has given you an idea of what Fingerpick can do. I'm admittedly a little biased, but I think it not only sounds great, but for me, it's also inspiring to play. Writing songs becomes a lot more fun. Of course, you can decide for yourself. If you disagree, send us an email within 30 days and we'll give you your money back. So hop on over to Realitone.com and pick up a copy. Thanks for watching. Thank you.